I was the Parks Manager for the Greater London Council from 1970 to 1986. The park, which was then mainly properties, buildings, roads, factories, we compulsory purchased um, the land to create the park. Factories like R. White's, Stevens Bakery, and we had a Bible factory on here. We went from there to rehousing uh, properties. Every time we moved, a part of the jigsaw puzzle was put in. Burgess Park needed redevelopment for a whole number of reasons, but not least because people felt unsafe about the park. It was really about the layout of the park. It was never a coherent park. People couldn't see far in the distance. We had the park which had been put together out of a range of different spaces. It's a unique park and it's been created from an old urban landscape and has been put together as a collection of green spaces. There was a very unshapely mounds and things like that. It looked as though it was never finished. And the opportunity came with the uh, Mayor of London's scheme in 2008, which gave us seed funding of two million pounds for the park. And with the NDC from the Aylesbury providing another four million, at last we had six million pounds which we could spend on the park. But once you've got the money, you have to have the design and the ideas and we went very much to the local community for those ideas. While we were consulting with local residents about the park and the changes they would like to see, I met some people who said they didn't come to Burgess Park, that they were frightened and never came here. I don't want that to be the view of local people. We had a speed dating event where basically the designers heard from the community what they wanted from the park. What it allowed us to do was get a really good understanding of exactly what the kind of key issues were. First, really critically, was of the issue of personal safety and that clearly was putting off a lot of people for coming in and using the park. They wanted the, the separate spaces to be brought together as a coherent whole, albeit recognising that a park is a place which is used differently by different people at different times. There was a big desire from the stakeholders part to make a beautiful place. Sections of it were more like a kind of wasteland really. There were old redundant roads running through it. There were areas of ground that you genuinely would have thought was some wasteland. They wanted it to be a destination, a place where people came to do things. In 2009 I hadn't been working here for very long and I thought there's this great open space in the middle of Southwark. But then to find it was empty, it was dull, there was nobody exercising here. Lots of people living across the road, they didn't feel safe to come here. We surveyed the park as part of the London Wildlife Habitat Survey and recognised that there was a huge opportunity to make significant improvements for wildlife and people's connection with nature in Burgess Park. The six million pounds which we had available was all time limited money. So we took procurement decisions around linking the appointment of the landscape architects and the design as one, which shortened the design part of the procurement. And secondly, we used one of the council's preferred partners, Balfour Beatty, who were already engaged with the councils on our Building Schools for the Future programme. We had a few surprises. We found uh, two diesel tanks, which were buried below ground. So they had to be removed, and all the ground had to be uh, uh, repaired. And that put six to seven weeks onto our programme. One of the key things that we had to do was actually to link all the spaces and footpath network together. So on the east side of the park here at Burgess, what we wanted to do was link that to the big lawn and also link views of that down to the lake. So you have a set piece design, which is about building, big lawn and lake. The Mayor has invested two million pounds in Burgess Park and as you can see, it's been a, a great investment. You can already see the, the brilliant features that have been created, the new improved lakes, much more open landscape wildflower meadows, new wetlands, and it provides a variety of facilities for all Londoners to enjoy. We were one of the main investors uh, to help with the improvements of Burgess Park, putting in £4 million of the total investment so far, uh, with a view that it would help to really kick-start the regeneration of the whole Aylesbury estate, which is undergoing a 15 to 20 year regeneration programme. Already we're seeing with the opening just over this weekend that people are really wanting and embracing it as their own space. We want to see the park to be the best it possibly can, so we're absolutely delighted with the wonderful, wonderful transformation of the park that's just been completed. It really is the jewel in Southwark's crown, I think, for health and wellbeing, and offers such a range of opportunities for people of all ages to take part in physical activity, from just walking the dog, out with the family, 
or taking part in a range of sports. There's many clubs that use Burgess Park. The changes to the park are just generally going to make the park feel a much more welcoming venue. The major change is obviously the surrounding of the lake, whereas before it was a bit of a concrete hole in the ground. Now you could sit here and imagine you're not in the centre of London. There was a huge demand for food growing areas, people want allotments, and we thought that if we could get a group together, we could manage that in the park. We didn't want to give people allotments because that would be great for the few, but actually everybody else would be excluded. So we thought a community garden was the best way to go. This is exactly the sort of place we need for local people. Look, it is wide open spaces, lovely hills, children playing everywhere and what we need is our children out running playing and not sitting behind screens or playing with computers. Where I like where is the bridge and the place where you do barbecues. When you go down the hills it makes you go really fast on your bikes or scooters. I like the climbing frame. I got to the top all the time. I really like the way and the climbing frame. This area right here because obviously this is where all the kids are playing. So it's giving, they're leaving the playing grass for the older generation, such as myself, to be able to play football over there. You've got the youngsters here, we're playing there, and so on. And we know that the older generation in us can now relax in peace on the estate, knowing nobody's going to give them any trouble. From a community safety aspect, I really like the fact that the park is been widened. The field of vision is much wider. We're able to see any potential hazards, anything like that, um, as well as gaining a public space that Southwark can be proud of. A lot of our families live in flats all around the park, both on the Aylesbury and um, over into Peckham, and they um, don't have a lot of access to outside space. It's been lovely having the uh, children's play areas opening and feeling that the children are coming back to the park. And I live in South East 15, but I can walk down to SE5 because it's not far to walk to the park. I enjoy all the stuff, you know, look and try to learn new plants and things in the park. The park is important to me because I'm on my own and I have severe heart trouble and operations. And if it wasn't for Art in the Park or the gardens itself, I wouldn't be here today because I'd be looking at four walls and it would literally drive me mad. The site has got a recognition of having a sort of borough-wide importance for wildlife. We believe that this would push it further up the grade. Um, through the improvements in uh, certain creation of habitats. So we've got wetlands, we've got wet woodland behind us, but more importantly, it's the enlargement of the lake, which provides much better habitat for a range of birds. It's about planting new areas of uh, chalk grassland on the banks. These are opportunities to really make an improvement to wildlife for the park as a whole. I think it just feels so much safer because it's that bit more open. The most important thing, it's for local people to enjoy and it's great to see so many people out today enjoying it. What better can you ask? About 10 years ago I was quite depressed at what I saw, but now I've come back today and I, I will say that I've walked around the park and it is really pleasing to see this park now, a regional park. There's no doubt about it. Right from the outset, we recognised that this park needed something like an 18 to 20 million pounds investment in it. What we've achieved to date is to get the bones right and to get the infrastructure right. We've long seen this area as being part of central London and we want a park that is, is on the, the level of, of other key central London parks. We've got a canvas on which we can, which we can write and which we want to paint going forward. One element of that is to recognise the Surrey Canal, which used to run through this area, and to link it with the lake. There's entrances that need improving, there's more planting that needs to happen, to be the sort of park that people around here need and deserve to have. What the, the sports and the clubs and the community need is a coherent sporting hub, and we're looking to invest in the sports, sporting facilities going forward. I would love to have a 100 metre street because there's no athletics club in Southwark. I actually develop a community um, sports club where, where the community can come socialise in and around the sport. We've gone some way with this funding, it really has transformed where we are, but what we want is to get to the next stage so that we can really develop this park and have a park that, that we are 
genuinely extremely proud of and that people from miles around will come to and see. We're really pleased of where we've got to today, but it's important to recognise that this really is the end of phase one for the park.